So in my real estate photography business in Minnesota, we offer two types of videos. We offer mobile videos, which are a lower end uh, social media, essentially video shot on a phone, uh, on a stabilized phone. And then we offer regular cinematic videos that some of you might know me for. In this video, I'm going to show you my editing process for one of these mobile videos in DaVinci Resolve. It's a fairly quick process. As you noticed, if you watched my editing video, this real estate photography business is all about efficiency. So um, that's pretty much what I try to bring to this mobile editing as well. Now again, if they shoot a cinematic video, whole different level of detail is gonna go into that. This is running gun editing and they pay for that. They pay for uh, speed and efficiency. So the first thing we're gonna start off with is, we, I've already downloaded all the video. Um, we're gonna find some music for it. I use Soundstripe and we'll go ahead and go into Soundstripe. Now, I'm not picky with my music. I'm not gonna spend an hour. I kinda, I have an aesthetic, I kinda know what I like. And if it's a, again, a lot of the properties we shoot in Minnesota are in the country. So a lot of times like a country type song or like acoustic, something slow, tends to work just fine for the majority of listings. But I always like to see what's out new. So we're just gonna listen to a few options. If something like this is, Yeah, something like this, like it's literally the first pick. Something like this is going to work. It's not country, but it's slow. It'll work for what I need. It's, it's got the right, the right energy for what I need. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and download that. We're gonna open up DaVinci Resolve. Go to the editing panel. This is pretty much what I work from. And we're gonna drag everything into here. Now when we shoot mobile videos, we shoot at 60 frames per second using 4K. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to right click on all of the video clips, clip attributes or attributes, switch the video frame rate to 23.976 and hit okay. What this does is I'm, I'm gonna be editing these 60 frames per second clips on a 24 frame per second, or 23.976 frames per second timeline. Um, the reason I do that is because it just, it slows down the, the 60 frames per second footage. And when you shoot in 60 frames per second, it's a uh, very smooth looking video. So um, we're gonna start with the exterior shots. And in DaVinci Resolve, I just, I'm not pressing anything. I'm just sliding my mouse back and forth just to see, just to preview the clip. And I just gotta find the clip that we're going to use. So, I don't like that one, he's moving a little bit. So we're probably gonna use this one here. So I'm gonna mark my in and out points. So in, out, let's see, in. Let's do that again. So I'm just gonna put this clip in reverse, probably. So we're gonna start with this. We'll put this in reverse. All right, so as you can see, I started this in reverse because his this is just a cleaner clip than when he was going the correct way. So. Seems like every song in Soundstripe and the other ones have this slow fade in and it's just, it takes too long. Okay, and I'm pretty much just editing on the beats. So I've got my intro clip. I just wanted to make sure I have that. Now I'm gonna go through and look at some of the other clips that we have, just see what the options are. Don't really have anything else I can use out here. Now I'm not gonna bring any other clips into the timeline just yet. I'm actually gonna go through them all and just mark in and out points. And all I'm looking for is just clean, clean clips. The goal is to be able to just drop these clips into the timeline one at a time and not have to make too many adjustments to them. 
Probably not going to use this clip. I just don't like that going over the lawn table thing. Let's delete it. As you can see, I have them do a back and forth motion just so they get clean options from either side. And if you're if you're wondering, yes, this is the biggest I can make these thumbnails, but it's it's perfectly fine. It does it does the trick. I don't really care for that. It's kind of a cool little ending shot. Although he made this the ending shot, so All right, so this is intended to be an artsy fartsy. Yeah, we don't want that. All right, so now that we've got, we're gonna actually, it looks like he's got these ordered. Let me reorder these things. There we go. All right, so now we're just gonna drag these in and uh, Just edit these to the beat and I'm also going to correct verticals and distortion. So this is something that's not talked a lot about in video. I think it's incredibly important. Most of these are going to be spot on, but there's going to be some that need corrected and we're going to do that. But I'm going to show you how fast it is to do that in DaVinci Resolve. do a retime just because it looks like he right at the end here it kind of almost went straight so we're going to fix that we're going to zoom in a little bit and correct the yaw and verticals zoom in a little bit more it's a little shaky so we're going to just stabilize it a little bit and you can see how fast stabilization works in davinci resolve See, he lands at a perfect thing there. Drop this clip in. And the main thing is, one of the things we're known for is correcting the verticals and everything on the video so they look just like our photos. Zoom a little bit more. I don't like how much ceiling there is. And because we use the iPhone, it does a really good job of auto color correction. So as you can see, we don't really need to do much color. Like occasionally I might need to do some things, but it's pretty rare. I usually just use the color that comes with the, uh, the iPhone stuff. Reverse this clip so it's going backward. I know I'm not explaining a lot about my thought process behind these. I hope you can forgive me, but I'll show you the flow so far. So just to kind of give you an idea of what we're doing. We, when, we, when we shoot these things, we shoot with the edit in mind. That's very important. We're gonna keep this exterior patio shot for later. Oops, 
too much. Don't need to have long, drawn-out shots of basic bedrooms. They're not looking at the decor. They're just looking to make sure it's a clean, spacious room. Now, if it were about the decor and it was more lifestyle, then, yeah, we're going to focus more on the details. But, again, these are social media videos. These are not meant to be high-end. Right, we didn't use that one. There we go. We're going to cut some of this out here. Let's see here. So we're going to cut this chunk out because we don't need it. We want this build up to happen probably here. Clean that up a little bit. Let's see. Okay, we'll go ahead and just add an audio transition to that just so it's smooth. Plus three. There we go. So we're done inside. 
We'll wrap up outside, which is this cool shot. Oh, no, actually we have... Where's it at? There's a deck shot. There it is. The shot first. And we're going to go ahead and add a zoom transition to this. Using motion VFX. Zoom smooth. And we'll just go ahead and add a sound effect to it as well, just, just for fun. Um, we'll do a... Uh, we'll go ahead and do this one here. I never used to like these, but I'm kind, they're kind of growing on me a little bit. These little wish. Oh, wait. That's just still rendering here. Go ahead and render these up just so we can see what that looks like. We'll do Oops, that was not what I wanted to do. I'm actually going to bring this a little bit back. This is a pretty long clip, so we're gonna reverse this actually because I want this to be coming away from the house. That fast, okay. And then we'll throw the ending clip on here, which is this one, I believe. Yep, this one here. Oops. And it does get quite loud here, so we're gonna actually bring this volume down a little bit just so it's not blaring. Okay, and I think I'm good with this. Let's just straighten these verticals up. And yeah, I think we're good. So now we're gonna go ahead and just save it. We're gonna to go to the export panel, title it with the address. Now, to be honest with you, I just use, it's like the default, um, there's a YouTube export option right here. I just use that and I just switch it to MP4 and I actually exported it uh, 1080p. And that's it. Go ahead and render it. You can see it's not going to take long at all to do this. It'll probably slow down once it gets to that transition because it has to do that.
All right, and we're all exported. So now we're gonna go back into Aereo and we're gonna go into that listing. And you can see I have a pretty fast upload connection that's already uploaded. So whoops, we're just gonna go into, we're gonna add video. Type in the address. And we're all set. Hopefully you found that helpful. I would highly encourage you to check out DaVinci Resolve. Uh, I used Premiere for the longest time. In fact, I've used it since it was Premiere Pro 7 before it switched to Premiere Pro CC before it became what it is now. Um, and this was back in 2002, 2003. So it's been a really long time since I've been using it. And about two years ago, two and a half, maybe even three years ago now, I switched to DaVinci Resolve, um, primarily for their color cap capabilities. And then I just discovered it was a pretty efficient editing workflow as well. So moved my whole workflow for video to Resolve and I haven't looked back since. Um, I, there was a stint in there where I did Final Cut Pro for about a year and I, I think that's a good program too. But if I were you and I was using Premiere, I would run from it as fast as I can, but keep it on hand because Premiere does have some things that are that are helpful um, that, that aren't as easy and, and resolve. So anyway, all that said, hopefully you found that helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.